Expand your team with a fiber freelancer. I don't get paid until next week. I got you. I'm Dave, and I can spot you up to 500 bucks of your future money instantly. Up to 500 bucks instantly? What else is in my future? A new couch. Only. Get up to 500 bucks instantly with Dave. That's why today, before God and my family, I'm announcing I'm running for president of the United States. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, former Vice President Mike Pence officially joining the race for the White House. We'll have the very latest from Iowa and the other candidates hoping to win the Republican nomination. Plus... We've been begging and talking about this uh, with individuals in leadership at the state of Mississippi, from the governor to the lieutenant governor, and we've had the door closed on us. A new investment for the city of Jackson, Mississippi. The millions of dollars being funneled their way to address decaying water infrastructure. And right now, wildfire smoke fully covering cities from Canada all the way down the East Coast. The air quality alerts in effect right now and how you can protect yourself from all of that smoke today. They were for everything. And now because of the senseless act, they are now without her. And after days of calls for action, an arrest is made in a Florida mother's shooting death. We're going to have an update for you on that case straight ahead. Scripps News Live begins right now. Hello and welcome to Scripps News Live. Great to see you today. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. It is now 3 p.m. on the East Coast, 12 p.m. out west. An already crowded field to tell you about, which is getting a little more crowded. Former Vice President Mike Pence launching his presidential campaign in Iowa today. That move pitting him against former president and his former boss, Donald Trump. There are now a dozen declared candidates. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum also declaring his run for the White House today. And former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie throwing his hat in the ring last night. Let's get you right out to Stephanie Liebergen, who's live for us in Iowa right now. So, Stephanie, I know that you were listening in to that big announcement. What has Mike Pence had to say to voters so far? Hey, Veronica, good afternoon. Well, during his formal announcement of his campaign for president in 2024, Pence hit on a lot of what you would expect a Republican candidate to focus on in his speech. He talked about the border and immigration. He talked about education choice. Family was a big theme throughout the entirety of his speech and those who led up to him as well. He talked about supporting the military, and there was a lot of focus throughout his speech on the economy. Here at home, we'll champion lower taxes. We'll extend the historic tax relief of the Trump-Pence administration and we'll give the American people freedom from excessive federal regulations and get back to repealing two federal regulations for every new rule that we put on the books. Now, Pence described himself as a small government Republican, said he's Christian, conservative, and Republican in that order, a phrase we've heard from him before. Um, he called his campaign the Great American Comeback. So he certainly was uh, hitting a lot of the typical Republican issues and also not shying away from the Trump administration record, saying he's proud of what he was able to do with former President Trump. And Stephanie, even though they worked together in the White House, he may have said that, but a lot of that was missing from his initial announcement when he decided to throw his hat in the ring. How did he address challenging his former boss? Well, you're right. In his video that was announced uh, that was released earlier this morning on social media, he didn't focus on, you know, the former president and opposing his former boss. But that is something that he stressed a lot and really mentioned a lot in his speech today. He was clear about the differences between him and former President Trump. Uh, one of the uh, differences he noticed is on their view of Russia and on Vladimir Putin and the role that they're playing in um, attacking Ukraine right now and the role that the United States needs to continue to play play in supporting Ukraine. But um, Pence pointed directly to January 6th as the reason why he is now running against his former running mate. Take a listen. On that fateful day, President Trump's words were reckless. They endangered my family and everyone at the Capitol. But the American people deserve to know that on that day, President Trump also demanded that I choose between him and the Constitution. Now voters will be faced with the same choice. I chose the Constitution, and I always will. 
Now, Pence, probably these were the harshest words we've heard out of Pence's mouth since the two, since um, January 6th and since he left office. He was very clear in his speech today, though. He said P Trump should never be president again, Veronica. All right, Stephanie Lieberkin tracking the very latest on the Pence announcement in Iowa. Stephanie, thank you so much. Now, as I mentioned, Pence's announcement follows another from former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie kicking off his own 2024 campaign. Christie starting his campaign in New Hampshire with a bang and coming out swinging against one-time ally turned foe former President Trump. Take a listen. A lonely, self-consumed, self-serving mirror hog <laughs> is not a leader. Let me be very clear. I am going out there to take out Donald Trump, but here's why. I want to win. And I don't want him to win. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum adding his name to the list of 2024 Republican contenders. Burgum launching his campaign in Fargo near his tiny hometown of Arthur, North Dakota. The governor there leaning into those small town roots as well as his business experience as a former software entrepreneur. The economy needs to be the absolute top priority. Every small business owner and every family in our country is feeling the corrosive hidden tax on their lives driven by the Biden-induced inflation. It shouldn't be a surprise that small town values have guided me my entire life. Small town values are at the core of America. And frankly, big cities could use more ideas and more values from small towns right now. Burgum's campaign says he'll visit early voting states this week with trips to Iowa tomorrow and Friday and then weekend stops in New Hampshire. So the city of Jackson, Mississippi is getting $115 million to fix its aging water system. The Biden administration making that announcement Tuesday. The decaying infrastructure in the city has caused an ongoing water crisis for the past several years and a catastrophic breakdown last year. National correspondent Tammy Eswick has been tracking the story for us and joins us now live from New Orleans with the details. So Tammy, what impact can we expect this funding to have? You tell the, the, the camera. Treatment facility, and I gotta tell you, a lot of people say that they're happy to get the money, but they won't be satisfied until those pipes are actually in the ground. Good news for a Mississippi city that can use some. The Biden administration and the Environmental Protection Agency announced that after decades of disrepair, Jackson's broken water system is getting $115 million in federal funds. It's the first disbursement on a promised $600 million boost from Washington designed to fix the Mississippi state capitals embattled water supply system. As you all may remember, uh, the city's water system uh, was a was in crisis at some point last summer and even long before then the people of Jackson have lived under constant threat of boil water orders. Jackson's water problems have included broken and busted pipes, leaks and boil water notices that have severely threatened local businesses and residents for decades. I really woke up to the issue that is that, that, that the whole system was being held together by bailing wire, scotch tape and some duct tape. Uh, and, and chewing gum um, about eight years ago. Last year, after heavy rains taxed the system's failing pumps, Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves affirmed the treatment plant was on the verge of failure. Many residents waited in long lines for clean water to drink, cook, bathe, and clean with. We've been begging and talking about this uh, with individuals in leadership at the state of Mississippi, from the governor to the lieutenant governor, and we've had the door closed on us. And it took the president of the United States and members of Congress to see and hear our plea. The feds appointed a third party water manager, Ted Hennepin, to oversee repairs on the decades old infrastructure. And on top of that, the city's outstanding debt of $280 million on the water system. Radica Fox, the EPA assistant administrator for water, says the initial $115 million investment will help provide a long needed stability to the people of Jackson roughly a quarter of whom live in poverty. About 50% of 
uh, the water that goes through the Jackson water system um, goes out in leaks. So we're going to be able to resolve that. We're going to be able to uh, make additional investments in the operation and maintenance of the systems. And, um, and, and what's so exciting is that this is the first installment of $600 million that the Biden-Harris administration will be um, putting in to really rebuild the Jackson water system. Though there's a long road ahead to update the city's old water system and treatment plant, Fox says the people of Jackson are already seeing the benefits of the work. We have been able to make improvements in, in the operation and maintenance of the uh, water treatment plant, which was the, the source of the, of the uh, water crisis where people were without water for, for, for many, many days. Local lawmakers like State Representative Chris Bell say they're confident the investments in ongoing operations will help revitalize the troubled city. We're just looking forward to getting our, our economy up and running. It will jumpstart our economy. Uh, we won't have to listen to the bad news of Jackson's dirty water or busted pipes and things of that nature. So we're, we're again, eternally thankful for what they've done for us. And Veronica, there's some controversy on the ground in Jackson, Mississippi. Some community groups are accusing the third party administrator, Ted Hennepin, of not including enough Jackson, Mississippi businesses in order to fix this problem. Instead, they're hiring, they say, too many out of town contractors. All right, Tammy Aswick reporting live from New Orleans with the details there. Tammy, thank you so much. And our coverage of the Jackson water crisis continues at 9 p.m. Eastern. Christian Bryant is going to be taking a closer look at how these funds are going to be spent and whether or not it's going to be enough to help people get that clean drinking water that they need. The city's interim manager of the water system joins Christian tonight at 9 on Scripps News Tonight. And coming up right here on Scripps News Live, a Florida woman now arrested after being accused of fatally shooting her neighbor. We'll have the charges that she's now facing straight ahead. Also, intense wildfires in Canada triggering air quality alerts for millions of people in the United States. Details about the threat and how you can protect your health next. They couldn't allow you to have the baby at the hospital. You could have a baby in a ditch. They could have both bled out. How many people has this happened to? Scripps News investigates. Turned away tonight at 8, 7 central. Only on Scripps News tonight. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned, too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. I'm gonna sell my life insurance Cause I don't need it anymore My kids are grown My wife is great Let's settle up the score It's time to travel to Pally Spend retirement happy Call 877 sell easy 877 sell easy 877 sell easy And sell your policy You can sell all or part Live your life play if you've had a change in health or you're over 65 and paying for $100,000 or more in a life insurance policy you don't need, get paid for it instead. Take the money that you get, call the living of you bet. Call 877 easy 877-LEASY, 877-LEASY, and sell your policy. Shopping for Father's Day is hard. Actually, it's easy. You never know what to get him. Just give me steak. It has to be perfect. Yep, dads want steak. Right now, Omaha Steaks is offering dad's favorite gift package that includes four of our exquisite bacon-wrapped filet mignons, four air-chilled boneless chicken breasts, boneless pork chops, jumbo Frank's dessert, and more. All for just $99.99. 
Save 61%. Order today at omahasteaks.com slash TV, and you'll get eight burgers free. Now that's what I'm talking about. Sunday nights on In Real Life. So for the baby? Yeah. <laughs> Scripps News journalists take you off the grid. We were just a bunch of kids with a camera. The stunts have become more specialized. And to the heart of the story. When the pandemic hit, the American dream kind of changed. There were a lot of warning signs. They just didn't care. In Real Life, Sunday at 8, 7 Central, only on Scripps News. Right now, wildfire smoke coming from Canada is blanketing cities along the U.S. East Coast and the Midwest. Fires are burning in Quebec and the smoke is moving south, triggering air quality alerts in several U.S. cities right now. New York City is experiencing the worst air quality of any, any major metropolitan area in the world. Mayor Eric Adams says he's concerned about the conditions and is acknowledging the need to prepare for similar issues in the future. So if you're in one of these areas right now, how is it all going to affect you? Well, Lindsay Thies joins us now live from San Francisco. And Lindsay, this is something that San Francisco is no stranger to because there are many wildfires that burn throughout Northern California this time of year. But what do folks in the Northeast and the Midwest need to know right now? Well, for those who may be experiencing something like this for the first time or the first time in a very long time and in parts of the Midwest, as well as um, those on the East Coast and Northern East Coast. Uh, the big thing is, is to really listen to any of those uh, signs that your body might be telling you about how it might be irritating you, this, this smoke and this environmental pollution, because truly experts say that even going outside for a few minutes can have some impact on your health. Wildfire smoke can cause symptoms like sneezing and watery or burning eyes, more phlegm or a wheezing cough. It can mean difficulty breathing or aggravating a person's asthma. And for certain cardiovascular patients, it can lead to stroke or heart attack. With dangerous air quality, ER visits and hospitalizations tend to go up too. We expect more and more people to get exposed to this and that there will be a lot more people presenting to the hospital in need for respiratory treatments, having respiratory difficulties, headaches, feeling lightheaded, all the things that would be expected from exposure to these sediments. The issue is the very fine particulate matter that gets inhaled. It's smaller than a strand of hair. But breathing that in, even in small amounts, experts say should be avoided. The key message is really to limit your time outdoors, to the extent possible, stay in, indoors as much as possible, protect the air in your car, in your home, really try to keep the smoke from coming in. Elderly, those with underlying health issues, and children are most at risk. But above all, for anyone who can, check your air quality. Most weather apps on your phone include it. Anything above 100 is a reason to take precaution. And so what are some things that you can do to help yourself out? Well, if you can, obviously stay indoors today. Close those windows. If you have, by chance, a HEPA air filter, that is wonderful, really. It's something that oftentimes folks who are asthmatic already have in their homes and use. Um, if you have to go about and you are driving, make sure that the AC in your car is doing the setting where it recirculates and is not pulling air in from the inside. And then last but least, those masks that maybe you haven't used since uh, a year or so ago or two years with COVID, you might want to pull some of those out as well. But some very specific things with those masks. You want to be using these KN95s or even a respirator that you could get from your local hardware store. You want to make sure they're fitting very snugly uh, just because these particulate pieces, this particulate matter is so small and fine. You know, these surgical masses, masks that we might have from, uh, from the COVID days, they're just not going to cut it, unfortunately, with this pollution. Veronica. All right, so use that KN95, a HEPA filter if you have one. Then, of course, if you're going to be in your car, you want to recirculate that air. All some good tips there. Lindsay Thies reporting live from San Francisco. Lindsay, always appreciate it. And here to help us understand exactly what people are facing right now in those parts of the country, Canada, is Neil Donahue. Neil is a chemical engineering professor at Carnegie Mellon and joins us now live. Uh, Neil, thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure. So, Neil, I've spent some time in Beijing, China, and I remember landing, walking outside, and immediately feeling like 
I just couldn't breathe. Uh, we know that the air quality in China isn't great. How bad is this situation in comparison? Um, it depends when you're on Beijing. Beijing and it's in Beijing. It, at its worst, um, Beijing was pretty bad. It's gotten a lot better. I have a niece who lived there for, for quite some time as well. Um, and it depends how close you are to the fire. Um, so a nuanced answer, but it, it's, it, it can be very similar to the, the sorts of things you experience there. I want to ask you about what is in the air right now, because I understand it being fine particle pollution, which is what is caused by the fire. What the Environmental Protection Agency is using to measure um, is what they're saying is the AQI. Uh, can you explain the AQI to us and, and how they measure risk? Yes. So the air quality index, AQI means air quality index. Um, and it's, do you remember those, those um, Homeland Security risk levels back in the day when Dick Thornburg was uh, first rolling them out? This is a little bit like that. So it, the, there are different pollutants that, uh, that we w worry about in, in the air. And the air quality index kind of puts all of them on an even scale uh, and, and makes the, the numbers easier to understand. So in the air quality index of 100 uh, means that the level of the pollutant, in this case, fine particulate matter, or PM 2.5, is at the what we call the National Ambient Air Quality Standard for short-term exposure. In other words, the, the, the fine particle concentration in the air today is at the maximum level that EPA uh, uh, has established as protective of human health for a day uh, or for a, a certain number of hours. Okay, so, so that's this... when we see an AQI of 100 and it's 118 in Pittsburgh right now I have on my screen. So it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Um, and I understand that there are 150 yeah. active wildfires burning right now in Quebec. But this has really touched areas as far west as Minnesota, all the way to Virginia. Tell us a little bit more about the spread. How and why is it able to spread so far? So air moves is the, is the simple answer. Um, and the thing about fine particles is they don't really fall. They're, they're, they, they don't settle out of the air uh, at any rate um, that, that, that makes really any difference at all. Um, just like those, those filters and, and CAN95 masks, this is a, one of the issues that we were working on teaching people during COVID as well, that the very, very fine particles uh, that those CAN95 masks and HEPA filters filter out um, don't fall from the air within a couple of meters. They float essentially forever. So they stay in the air until it rains. Um, and also as they, you know, the farther it goes, they get dispersed and their concentrations go down. But they're not, they're not for the most part, not falling down. So they're, they're getting to us from Canada because right now the air circulation is, is northerly. It's from, the, from, from Canada into uh, the Midwest and the eastern uh, seaboard. So if those particles stay in the air forever, uh, is the only chance of this dissipating waiting for rain? I mean, how long will residents on both sides of the U.S. and Canadian yeah. border be dealing with this? Is it, is it going to be until there's a severe weather event and, and we do see more rain? Well, they do get dispersed and air flows across the country in a few days, um, typically, um, just if you think about weather systems as they, as they move across the country. But um, so, so if you're, as, as your reporter from, from the Bay Area um, has experienced uh, for sure, uh, you have, if you're close to a fire, you have air quality problems from the smoke from that fire as long as the fire is burning. Um, and so for us being, um, a thousand miles away from the fire uh, it depends on whether the wind is blowing you know it's just the same as if you're sitting around a bonfire if the wind's blowing toward you you're in the smoke you're going to experience the effects of that smoke uh, as the weather system moves across the the country the the wind direction you know usually the winds are from the south southwest on average most of the time and when that's true that smoke is going to be blowing out across the maritimes and into the north atlantic um, when we get the air from 
um, from Canada, from, from the north, then the, the air is coming at us. So from our perspective, it's mostly n not really till it rains, but when till the wind blows in another direction or the fires uh, uh, are burn themselves out or are, are put out. So it sounds like we have to wait for the wind to shift um, or the fires obviously to, to die down yeah. like you were suggesting. But Neil, I, I want to ask you this because I know that you're an engineer and you study particular, particular matter. So how are you dealing with things? And if you have to advise people, what is your best advice? So quite frankly, for the concentrations today in, in Pittsburgh, um, it's high enough to be uh, annoying. We're a little bit above the daily standard. Um, and my advice, my so I'm about to go race, do a bicycle race in a, in a couple of hours. Um, and it's not high enough that I personally am uh, am changing my plans because of that. Um, but one, I would encourage people at the level we have here in Pittsburgh today to be aware of the, the concentrations. And if they're uh, if they're at all vulnerable, if they have respiratory symptoms, if they have, you know, if, if they're asthmatic, to certainly take uh, significant care. And as your reporter said, pull those KN95 masks out. Um, if they had uh, HEPA filters, again, from, from COVID for indoor air, turn those on uh, and filter the air. Um, stay indoors if, if your indoor air quality is good. Um, but at, at these levels, my own advice, personal choice is is to say pay attention to your own health your own risk and then proceed as uh, as as that indicates if you're in an area that's up in the well above 150 on the air quality index um, then a lot of people that's going to be a little bit more like that day in Beijing when, mm. when you think holy heck I got to get inside um, and and I'm going to go race my bike another day. Seriously, yeah, black lung, I think, is what they call it. All of that uh, that matter that kind of sits in your lungs after you spend a lot of time in it, like a lot of those folks in China, which is why they wear masks to begin with. Uh, but yes, good idea, Neil. Um, I'm sure that you can get back on your bike another time, uh, but we appreciate your expertise today. Neil Donahue, thank you so much for your insight. Straight out on Scripps News Live, Norfolk Southern asking a judge to throw out a class action lawsuit filed on behalf of families impacted by February's devastating train derailment. What the CEO had to say during a stop in Atlanta. But first, an update out of Florida right now as the state's stand your ground law is in the spotlight yet again. The deadly shooting and the new arrest that is sparking a debate. How does Klein Inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country? Because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers, the most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product, motor vehicle accident, or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. A better banking app is right at your fingertips. Download Dave, and you can get up to $500 instantly, right through your phone. There's no interest, no credit checks, and no late fees. Because getting help shouldn't set you back. Ditch the big banks and trust the bear to get up to $500 instantly. Download the Dave app now, or go to Dave.com today. I kept seeing this shoe brand all over TikTok. It's called Kizik. Look at this. Bam, bam. Look at that. These are absolutely amazing. The whole purpose behind this shoe is that it's completely hands-free. Oh, no. They're so easy to get on. No tying, no pulling, no heel crushing, no hands. Kizik, they are no ordinary shoe. Time to step up your shoe game and step into Kizik's. Get 15% off today at kizik.com slash TV. Confused by all the Camp Lejeune toxic water commercials? Let me answer some of your questions. Are claims filed against the U.S. Marine Corps? No. The U.S. government has set aside billions of dollars for those who have suffered. The Marine Corps will not be impacted. Will a Camp Lejeune claim affect my VA benefits? 
No. According to the VA, your right to VA benefits will remain intact. If you have questions about a Camp Lejeune claim, call the Driscoll firm now for a free consultation. 1-800-273-4800. There's a lot to watch on TV these days. Problem is most streaming options are incredibly pricey and you'll end up paying for the local channels you can get for free. Luckily, there's a solution. Sling is only 40 bucks a month. And you get awesome stuff like sports, news, and today's hottest TV for half of what the other guys cost. If you already get free locals with an antenna, now you can easily add the channels you're missing with Sling. It's the TV you love for a price you'll love. Visit sling.com slash antenna to learn more. Introducing the world's smartest fence. Halo Collar is a virtual fence inside a collar. Easily create halo fences right in the app. Virtually anywhere. Teach them to keep away from danger and come back to safety. Give your dog the freedom of a life off-leash. So they can roam wherever you go. It's a whole new world for you and your dog. Hey there. Welcome back to Strip Series Live. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Great to see you on this Wednesday. It is now 30 minutes after the hour. Here are some of the other stories that we're keeping an eye on for you right now. Hundreds of people are still evacuating from southern Ukraine after the destruction of a major dam caused widespread flooding. Ukrainian officials say about 1,800 houses in the region have flooded. The water level is expected to increase by another three feet in the next 20 hours. Ukraine and Russia have traded blame on which country is responsible for the dam's breach. And check this out, a 10-year-old leading police on a mile-long chase down a Michigan highway. Police said OnStar disabled the vehicle after the driver, identified in the report as a boy, refused to stop the car. He later told officers that he had taken the vehicle in an attempt to drive to Detroit to see his mother. The child was booked at the Saginaw County Juvenile Detention Center, and thankfully the police reported no injuries in the case. So gun violence in the United States hit a new record high in 2021 with nearly 49,000 gun deaths. The Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Violence Solutions says there were increases in both gun-related homicides and suicides. The report, which analyzed CDC data, also says that guns are the leading cause of death for children and teenagers between the ages of 1 and 19 years old. More than 18,000 people have died from gun violence so far this year alone, and that is all according to the Gun Violence Archive. Now to Florida, where a woman who's been accused of shooting and killing her neighbor last week after a dispute has been arrested. The victim, a 35-year-old black mother of four, died after being shot through the suspect's door. Police waited to arrest the 58-year-old white suspect while they investigated whether the shooting was justified under Florida's Stand Your Ground law. Justice correspondent Jamal Andres has been following developments in this case for us and joins us now live from Dallas, Texas. So Jamal, take us through the timeline of this case and explain to us what led to this woman's arrest. Yeah, yeah, Veronica. Well, frankly, a lot of pressure from this family and the community aimed at local authorities. As you mentioned, this took place on Friday of last week and there wasn't an arrest until uh, Tuesday evening. So. You know, the family who was represented by civil rights attorney Ben Crump said in a statement, while they are relieved that the arrests and the charges have taken place, they don't think it should have taken quite this long. Susan Louise Lorenz was arrested Tuesday night for shooting and killing her neighbor after a years-long series of disputes, according to police. The 58-year-old white woman is accused of shooting Ajika A.J. Owens, a black mother of four, through the front door of her home. We want the same thing as Miss Owens's family, and that's justice. Lorenz faces manslaughter, battery, and assault charges for the shooting. My grandchildren's mother was shot and killed with her nine-year-old son standing next to her. She had no weapon. She posed no imminent threat to anyone. According to police, Lorenz had become angry at Owens' children while they played near her home. Police say Lorenz yelled at the children, hit one of them in the foot with a skate, and swung at them with an umbrella. When Owens repeatedly knocked on the door to speak with Lorenz, police say she fired one shot through the door, hitting Owens in the chest. Owens later died at the hospital. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump, who's representing the Owens family, told Scripps News Lorenz hurled racial slurs at the children before the shooting. You can't help but 
question whether there was some racial motivation involved in this killing. The Marion County Sheriff said Florida's controversial stand your ground law prevented him from immediately making an arrest. The laws here in the state of Florida are clear. Now, I may not like them. I may not agree with them. But however, those laws I will follow. Broadly, stand your ground removes the duty to retreat before responding with deadly force in self-defense. It also gives any law-abiding citizen the right to defend themselves anywhere they are legally permitted to be. But the Marion County Sheriff's Office determined it was not applicable to this case. An unarmed neighbor walking up to your door to knock on the door does not create a reasonable um, threat of death or great bodily harm. And Texas Tech law professor Jeffrey Korn agrees. And obviously, stand your ground has nothing to do with it, because if they were a deadly threat, it wouldn't matter whether you were in New York State or Florida or Texas or, or Illinois, you're in your home. You don't have to retreat. Lorenz faces a potential 30-year prison sentence on the manslaughter charge alone. And, Veronica, while the specifics are different, many are drawing comparisons between this shooting and the shooting of Ralph Yarl in Kansas City or Kaylin Gillis in New York, essentially making the point that these seemingly trivial, mundane daily tasks, like picking up a sibling from a neighbor's house or parking in the wrong driveway, are slowly becoming potentially fatal mistakes. Absolutely. And we know that in the case of Ralph Yarl, there are questions as to whether stand your ground will apply. Uh, but it sounds as though it's not going to apply in this case. Jamal, what happens next here? Yeah, yeah. Well, in most of these cases, what you often see is you have someone that is arrested, taken into custody. You have that uh, that initial hearing where they get to plead guilty or not guilty. And from there, the, the, the case is built by this district attorney who is going to handle the ultimate uh, a trial here. Now, obviously, there's an option for this defendant to plead out. You know, you have an older defendant here who may want to take that route rather than fighting for her innocence. But more often than not, uh, in a case of this sort of magnitude, you often see uh, this move for a trial and the district attorney sort of build a case to potentially move forward here. All right, Jamal Andrews reporting live from Dallas. Jamal, thank you so much for the update. You know, not even high school graduation ceremonies these days are immune from gun violence. Police say an 18-year-old who had just graduated was one of two people shot to death after a high school graduation in Richmond, Virginia. Five other people were shot, and those shots were fired outside of the theater where that graduation was taking place. And it happened as families celebrated and were taking photos. Just everybody started running, and I pushed her down on the ground. We got down on the ground, and... Um, it's just chaos from there. You just kept hurting shots. It was like eight, nine, ten shots. A child should be able to go to their graduation and walk out their graduation and enjoy the accomplishment with their friends and their families. There were several other injuries, including a nine-year-old girl who was hit by a car. Investigators arrested a 19-year-old, and they say that he had four handguns and may have known one of the people who was shot. In other news at this hour, Norfolk Southern trying to get out of a class action lawsuit in East Palestine, Ohio. The rail company is asking a judge to toss out the suit. It claims the railroad is liable for the property damage and health concerns caused by February's train derailment. Norfolk Southern is saying that the claims are vague. Their lawyers are arguing that the company is protected by federal law. Norfolk Southern says it has taken steps to improve safety since that derailment. Scripps News correspondent Morris Sirianni spoke with the CEO during a training event here in Atlanta. It's not the type of Norfolk Southern train you typically see barreling down the tracks. Instead, this train operates more like a classroom. This week, the company rolled its Operation Awareness and Response Safety Train through Atlanta, one of about 15 expected stops this year nationwide. We're, we're very focused on safety. We take it very seriously. Company CEO Alan Shaw says the goal is to offer hands-on training to first responders in communities where Norfolk Southern operates. For us, it's about prevention, it's about mitigation, and it's about response. You know, last year, we had the lowest number of derailments on Norfolk Southern in the last two decades, and we can get better. But so far this year, Shaw has been in the hot seat following Norfolk's February 3rd train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. 
grilled by local, state, and federal officials after more than 1 million gallons of hazardous chemicals were released into the air, soil, and water in eastern Ohio and neighboring communities in western Pennsylvania. And while the governors of both states have been sharply critical of the rail company, on Tuesday, Georgia's governor praised Norfolk Southern's dedication to first responder safety training. We know how important that is to be learning how to deal with something, you know, on a train at, at 10 o'clock in the morning versus at 2 a.m. having never done this before and trying to figure out what do we do next. Shaw said Norfolk Southern has committed nearly $36 million to help East Palestine recover. They're up there working on the environmental remediation. They're working on the family and business assistance. And they're working on investments to help the community thrive. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine has said long-term impacts on residents' health, property value, and water monitoring are top of mind. To that end, Shaw said Norfolk Southern is working with the Attorneys General of Ohio and Pennsylvania to set up long-term medical compensation funds to address citizens' concerns. And when it comes to the cleanup efforts, on Tuesday, the head of the Environmental Protection Agency provided this update. Over 60,000 tons of waste has been removed from that site. Over 20 million gallons uh, of liquid uh, waste has been removed from that site because it's our job and our expectation that we will restore this community back to some sense of normalcy as soon as possible. And while the EPA estimates most of the cleanup will be done by the end of the summer, Shaw says Norfolk Southern's work in East Palestine will likely take much longer to complete. We're going to be there five years from now. We're going to be there 10 years from now. Mara Sirianni, Scripps News, Atlanta. Now, in addition to that class action lawsuit, the state of Ohio and the Justice Department are also suing Norfolk Southern in hopes of getting the company to pay for the cleanup and any long-term effects. Now to Kansas, where abortion providers are suing the state over a new law that's set to take effect on July 1st. That lawsuit also challenging existing restrictions, including a requirement that patients have to wait a full day after seeing a provider before ending their pregnancy. The newer law requires providers to tell a patient that a medication abortion can be stopped with a regimen that medical groups have said is unproven and potentially dangerous. The providers behind the lawsuit claim that requirements targeting abortion laws have become invasive and are spreading medical misinformation. So hundreds of pregnant patients in the meantime have been turned away from emergency rooms over the past decade, violating a federal law. And it's the focus of a Scripps News investigation you can only see on Scripps News tonight. One woman telling our Lori Jane Gleha that her terrifying story after she gave birth in a car on the side of the road led to this. The fact that the doctor said they couldn't allow you to have the baby at the hospital, but if you could have a baby in a ditch, what does that say to you? I don't understand why they would send me without medical help when they knew how, how close I was to having a baby. It hurts me and it makes me furious about it. If I was to lose her, I don't, I don't think I'd ever be able to move on. So I basically would have stood there and watched my whole world disappear. Coming up, Scripps News investigates, digs deeper into how often this happens, where it's happening, and why it's happening. Lori Jane Gleha will join our Julie Martin with another look into the story straight ahead at 5 p.m. Eastern on Scripps News Live. And you can watch Lori Jane's full investigation at 8 p.m. Eastern on Scripps News tonight. In the meantime, coming up next on Scripps News Live, a Florida bookstore hoping to offer more access to people looking for banned books. After a quick break, we're going to introduce you to the Florida Book Rescuers and their mission to inspire readers. And a quick programming note and a reminder right here, call us on our Scripps News Viewer Hotline toll-free. That number on your screen right now, 1-833-4-SCRIPS. Again, it's 1-833-472-7477. You can share your comments and your story ideas. Are you ready for a fresh new bath or shower? Well, now is the best time with 50% off installation and no interest and no payments for one year. Hi, I'm Christina, and it's time to flip your old worn out bath or shower with Jacuzzi Bath Remodel today. Everyone knows the Jacuzzi brand. They're the most trusted name in water for over 60 years. But did you know they can install a gorgeous bath or shower that feels incredible in as little as one day? 
It's no stress and no mess with a lifetime warranty. Now let's talk beauty. You deserve to start and end your day in a beautiful space that feels great and is custom designed just for you. So call or go online now to see the Christina preferred designs like Canyon, Farm, and Urban. Now that's the total bathroom beauty that I love at a price you can afford. And how about safety? Like an ultra low profile, easy entry shower complete with grab bars and a custom design seat. You deserve safety and peace of mind without sacrificing style. Because with all the worries in daily life, taking a shower shouldn't be one of them. Every time I stepped over my old tub, I worried I might fall. I don't have those fears anymore. Jacuzzi bath remodel gave me a gorgeous shower that's safe too. I've been trying to get him to remodel that bath for years. I called and they did in just one day. And at a price we could afford. With one call to Jacuzzi Bath Remodel, you can effortlessly transform that old, ugly eyesore into the stunning bath or shower of your dreams that you'll love for years to come. Call or go online now to jacuzzibathremodel.com to get 50% off installation. Plus, ask how you may qualify for no interest and no payments for 12 months. And when you call right now, we'll give you our complete safety upgrade for free. Go to jacuzzibathremodel.com or call 800-218-1279. That's 800-218-1279. Call now. Are you or a loved one between the ages of 50 to 80 years old? If you are younger than 80 years old, do you receive Social Security, Disability, or Medicare? If you answered yes, you may qualify for $30,000 in funeral insurance for only pennies a day. The average funeral costs around $11,000, and Social Security only pays $255, leaving your loved ones to pay the balance. Call now to see if you qualify for $30,000 in funeral expense coverage from Senior Legacy Life. Your rate will never increase. Your benefits will never decrease, and there is no medical exam, even even if you have a pre-existing disease or illness. Don't be a financial burden to your family. Lock in your rate by completing an application over the phone right now. Will you qualify for funeral insurance up to $30,000 for only pennies a day? Find out by calling Senior Legacy Life. Call 1-800-300-5808 to speak with a licensed insurance agent. That's 1-800-300-5808. Create amazing work with Fiverr. All you need is your team and a talented freelancer who will lend a hand and seamlessly join your team from just about anywhere. Expand your team with a Fiverr freelancer. Local, national, and worldwide headlines. Breaking down the day's biggest stories with live reporting from around the globe. I'm Del Walters, and this is The Debrief. Live tonight, starting at 6, 5 central, only on Scripps News. Glendale, California, turning into the scene of a heated protest over recognizing Pride Month. This is what it looked like on Tuesday outside of the headquarters of the Glendale Unified School District. Board members were meeting to discuss a resolution to recognize June as Pride Month, already a nationwide celebration of gay rights and the LGBTQ plus community. But counter protesters who showed up say that exposing children to LGBTQ issues doesn't belong in the school system. The school board ultimately passed the resolution for the fifth year in a row. Police made at least three arrests during the scuffle. And attempts to ban or restrict certain books in schools and libraries across the nation reached their highest point in two decades. It's all according to the American Library Association. And now one Florida bookstore is expanding its mission to rescue books and get them into the hands of readers. Stasi Olmos from Scripps News Tampa Bay explains how a bookshelf on banned books is becoming a bigger movement. You know, one thing that's nice is when you tell a human not to do something, thousands of other humans are going to be like, oh yeah, well I would like to do that. That's what George Brooks is witnessing firsthand after starting this small section of banned books in his used bookstore, The Book Rescuers in St. Pete. We've actually already sold, sold out of an entire miles. row of this, an entire one of this. Brooks started this section after he noticed local teachers dropping off boxes upon boxes of books. We've had teachers come scared and totally given us their entire library because the list isn't in black and white. 
The list isn't really a list in Florida. It's the regulation of content under several laws Governor Ron DeSantis passed in the last year, including parental rights in education, school transparency, and stopping, quote, woke indoctrination. For example, the Hillsborough County School Board banned This Book is Gay from middle school libraries in March due to the law preventing classroom instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity. We actually take the approach of any book that's ever been challenged or banned, tried to remove from people's access, and we want to highlight those books and get them into more people's hands. Books in this banned section include Holes, which was banned for child labor and violence, as well as the Bible, which was just banned in Utah for vulgarity and violence. I've been here quite a few times. I love like reading, like I've just actually finished two books today. Bella Melby Maisie is a high school senior in Newport Ritchie. I have read quite a few banned books in like the past and I know my mom's a teacher and so they're making her like lay out all her books and they're going to go through and take out any books that they think that shouldn't be in school and I think that's just not okay. Both the American Library Association and the Penn American nonprofit for free expression are tracking record book bans across the country. Penn's analysis tracked nearly 1,500 books banned in the first half of the 2022-23 school year. In the 2021-2022 school year, they tracked 2,500. You are at 29. Due to demand, the book rescuers just launched a website for anyone to submit voiceovers or record videos reading banned or challenged books for others to listen to on a podcast or YouTube coming soon. Even if you can't find your local bookstore that has them available, you'll be able to go online and watch and listen to them. Just free access, and that's what it's about. Stassi Olmos from Scripps News Tampa Bay. We appreciate it. Next on Scripps News Live, the newly crowned Spelling Bee champion is finally back home again. His message to other students hoping to make a buzz in next year's Spelling Bee. And we do want to remind you right here to follow us at Scripps News on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and on TikTok. We'll be right back. I'm going to sell my life insurance because I don't need it anymore. My kids are grown, my wife is great, let's settle up the score. It's time to travel to Pally. Spend retirement happy. Call 877-LEZ. 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 And sell your policy. You can sell all or part. Live your life, play it smart. 877-LEZ. And sell your policy. If you've had a change in health, or you're over 65, and paying for $100,000 or more in a life insurance policy you don't need, get paid for it instead. Take the money that you get, gonna live it up, you bet. Call 877-LEZ, 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 and sell your policy. Subscribe today. How does Klein Inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country? Because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers, the most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product, motor vehicle accident, or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. Sure, you should teach him to ride a bike. Then, use Greenlight and teach him how to invest in bikes. Teach him to be smart about money, and he'll go far. Super far! Oh, hey, Mom! Navigate the world of money together. Invest in your best investment. Greenlight. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned, too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. 
right now. Get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. All right, if you are trying to head outside today and enjoy the water, check this out. You're not alone. Tiger cubs at the London Zoo have been splashing and playing in the pond during their first swimming lesson earlier in the week. Cubs Zach and Crispin can be seen right here playing with balls while their parents watch. The zoo is saying that tigers love water and they make excellent swimmers, all thanks to their webbed paws. Hmm. And take a look at this. 2023 Scripps National Spelling Bee champ Dev Shaw getting a hero's welcome home. The 14-year-old arriving at Tampa International on Tuesday evening where he was greeted by dozens of cheering family members, friends, and teachers. Shaw was named the champion just last week after spelling the word samophile. Can you spell it? Samophile. Yeah, I couldn't either. It's okay. He took home a trophy, a $50,000 prize. Shaw is also the first person to win the National Spelling Bee from Florida in 24 years. One thing for sure, I do want more Floridians to win the Spelling Bee. Um, I'm the first in like 25 years, so I hope that changes and I'll gladly help that change. Shaw previously competed in 2019 and in 2021 and has been competing in spelling bees since the third grade. His former teachers describe him as hardworking, determined, and a lot of fun to be around. <laughs> Congratulations to him. 27 years after his murder, hip-hop legend Tupac Shakur is being honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame today. The actor, activist, and poet is widely regarded as one of the greatest rappers of all time. He sold more than 75 million records, including seven studio albums released after his death. And he garnered critical acclaim and controversy during his short five-year career before Tupac was killed in a drive-by shooting in Vegas in 1996. So chatbots can be helpful in a number of areas, but when it comes to eating disorders, the technology was doing more harm than good. Our Del Walters is up next. He's got more on that. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. The news continues right here on Scripps News Live. I'll see you back here in the meantime tomorrow.